I'm honored to be here this morning in my rightful place. I do this like I breathe. But before I start, because we're visual learners, amen. amen. We like to see stuff even though when we hear it, sometimes we can't see it. So I have a clip that I want you to listen and watch closely. And I want you to put your hearing ears on because we can listen, but I need you to hear today. Yeah, I need you to hear this because people are falling through the cracks. They're dying early without not even knowing what's happening. I lost my granddaughter in April. She was three years old. It's been, this is the first time I've ever been able to get up to speak without a tear running from my eyes. Now I teach people how to live every day and I couldn't do anything about her leaving. So I do this from a heart that's bigger than you can even imagine. And whether you believe what I say or not, it's true. So sit back, relax. If you got some pepper this morning, great. You can breathe clearly now. But I need you to get this. If you've not gotten anything else, I don't care what pastor's even teaching on. Because without this, you can't do that. So could you pay that clip for me? When you look at our community, more than 50% of people over age 50 are overweight. On the average, about 45% of blacks have some sort of cardiovascular disease. It sounds like an epidemic. It is an epidemic. I lost my mom to cardiovascular disease. Both of my parents died of diabetes and such. What you eat impacts on your blood pressure, your diabetes, your cholesterol, and your weight. Hello, I'm Bruce Johnson. And at age 42, I survived a massive heart attack. You had what we call premature coronary artery disease, secondary to the elevated cholesterol. We had no other choice but to, to, but to attempt some form of heroics here. More than a million Americans won't be as lucky. They'll die this year from cardiovascular disease. Many of our churches today, when we go to eat that food, it's not as healthy as it should be. The good old soul food, the turkeys, the macaroni and cheeses, the stuffings. Good home cooking food, like down home cooking. Most African Americans spend most of their lives at church. We want the pastors to tell the congregation that they need to live healthy, they need to listen to their doctors. The whole thing is to make sure people in this sanctuary and any other sanctuary understand the purpose of being healthy and fit. We, we definitely partnered up with the churches. We have actually partnered up with Abyssinian Baptist Church. We decided more than 10 years ago that we were going to be healthier. It's wise to look at, at ways to curtail our eating. We don't have to dig a grave with, with our forks. If we can change one lifestyle, particularly the children, we can actually save generations. Was that you do the holiday? Were those the foods that plagued your plate? Were you one of the ones that couldn't wait to dig in the macaroni and cheese, the collard greens, the sweet potatoes, and the fried chicken? Those are the very foods that are leading us to an early grave. And you know, I honor pastor because I've told him I believe every church needs to have a health message. This is the first master class. And they're gonna, this is going to set the foundation for a lot of you because believe it or not, this information is going to change your life. Whether you believe it or receive it, it's going to. Because when you start doing it, it has no choice but to do the right thing when it happens inside of you. You just have to make the decision. So the title of this class or presentation today is called The Royal Treatment. Because some of us aren't giving us royal treatment. We want it. But you have to give it to yourself. You have to plan it every day. 
It needs to be a part of your life. You can't just do it because everybody's doing it for this special event. You got to live every day. When you feed that baby, do you feed him every day or feed her every day? The food that God said to feed that comes from mama's breast, not from that animal called a cow, your mama ain't Elsie. But that's what we've been trained and taught to do. So this is about taking your health to the next level. Now, why do Christians get sick? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. The Bible says that we perish for the lack of knowledge. And I find that in the Christian community, that is so true. People don't even know some of the things that I say, and what they say to me are things like this. That makes sense. I don't know why my mama didn't tell me that. Why are not mothers and grandmothers passing this information down to their children so they can pass it on to their children's children? I want to ask some of you virtuous women. How many people cook in their home today? Raise your hands. I mean still today. I don't mean like once a day, once a week. I'm talking about every day. Do you make it a habit? And it's okay. No shame on you if you don't. You ain't got to talk about it to your neighbor. <laughs> if you ain't cooking, you ain't cooking, right? If your food comes from McDonald's, Burger King, and all the people out there, I call it Murder King, right? Because it's the king of murdering people with them burgers, right? Killing folks continuously, that fried chicken, right? We got to stay away from the world's places that tell us to eat, and we got to go back into the kitchen. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. Whether you know how or not, whether mom taught you or not, you're going to learn today. Because you need to learn how to pass this on to your children so you cut, don't cut their lives off short. So why are Christians getting sick today? Are they getting sick because Christians are no different than the world? Are they doing the same things as the world? I mean... When I come any place, because I don't have to go to work, I work for myself, but I see these long lines in some of these places I call the crack house, you know, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts. Are you all familiar with those places? Yeah, that's the Christian crack house. Because you ain't got no business in there. If you knew what coffee did to you, although you're going to know, because when I finish, you're going to know about everything you put in your body, and you will decide whether it will go in or stay out. I don't put just anything in this body because I honor it. I want it to look good till I leave here. You know, I don't, I don't like finding out that I see people my age, and they're on dialysis, you know, that house that the doctors, you know, they pay for those houses, by the way. They sew into that because that's how they get more patients case you didn't know. And then you go there, oh, I got to go to my dialysis treatment. Why ain't it at your health club treatment? We're going to the wrong places. But you have a choice. And I don't care how old you are, 8 or 80, blind, crippled, and crazy, you can reverse it. Could it possibly be that sickness is a sin that you bought about yourself? by the things that you chose to do because you didn't know that you were violating the laws of God? See, this ain't new for me teaching. I've been teaching it for over 30 years. And it's so funny that everybody's into it now. Have you heard about Tabitha? Yeah, I know about Tabitha. I also know some of the food over at Target is not healthy, but they're pulling her in too. You're not going to put my name on anything because I need to read the labels first and know that it's okay. I don't want you eating something that I said is okay, but you snuck something in there. That's what the devil is doing anyway. See, when you prepare it at home, you know what you put in the pot. But when you let somebody else tell you that it's good and you just open the bag and eat it, and then you don't feel good, you don't even know why. I said to Pastor today, we as families don't even eat at the table anymore together. No, you got your meal, you got your meal like you at a restaurant. That's not what you're supposed to be doing because if everybody got sick, you'd know what they got sick from. But everybody eating a different meal, you don't know what's happening. Captain. We're talking about the natural laws of health. 
God knew that this time was coming. He provided a way for you to escape. Say escape. Because you're caught in the trap. Even if you don't think you are, if you're dealing with diabetes or medication, if you got your blood pressure medicated, because you're calling it yours. Why are you calling it yours and you want to get off of it? Oh, my high blood pressure medication. I got to take my pills or my diabetes. Yours? It wasn't yours, so they told you. And now you done owned it? How about call them a king or a queen? I'm healthy in this body. I do what I'm supposed to do. I don't let nobody tell me what to do. I know when I eat something that somebody gave me that ain't right because my body tells me. The doctor trying to figure out anyway, telling you, oh, that's connected to your hereditary situation that your family passed down to you. Let's pass down some good things when it comes to health. I'm trying not to get off of my subject here. We need to know that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, I might skip a couple of them, just keep rolling, just follow me, you know, like the musicians do. <laughs> you see, your brain was programmed to do the right thing when food goes into your body. It automatically knows what to do with the food, because when you feed your body right, the brain gets the right signals, and the body does the right thing. But when it does it, eat some dairy. Woo, <laughs> my stomach is bubbling, talking to me, Right? And you knew that you have a problem with dairy, but you keep putting it back in there. Are you stuck on stupid? <laughs> why would you eat something that hurts your body? That's crazy. And then you wonder why it don't feel good. And not only that, you don't eat it once. Have you done it once and then done it again? And again? And again? That's crazy. And it don't make sense, right? But it sure does taste good, right? But your tongue ain't in control of your body. Your mind is. And so we got to fix it. Pastor, they can't hear what you're teaching them because half of them thinking about the meal they're going to have after the service. <laughs> I would never forget a lady who told us in class, she said, you know what, I really love your teaching. But when I'm sitting there sometimes because I'm a cook, I can't wait till I'm preparing my next meal. It's already in my mind. I go, wow, and it's all dead food. If nothing's live on your plate, you're eating death. Woohoo! <laughs> God programmed Adam and Eve and all of his children, everything they need that pertains to life, health, and godliness. He programmed us like that. And because we haven't been programmed in the church because they don't reinforce it except for here now. Now you're going to know, if you don't know, in January, you'll get it in February or you'll get it in March. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. And whether it's this lesson or the next lesson, because, you know, in school, you may not have been good at every subject, right? But this health subject, you got to get it right. Because if you get it wrong, you're going to pay a price. So when we look at things, I mean, I've seen everybody that's been healed from being in a chair to blind eyes. I've seen it with my own eyes in this day. I don't know what you're dealing with. But what I do know is that the healer is here today, so is your healing. You're just waiting for it. He's waiting to tell you what to do. As a matter of fact, he's probably told some of you and you ain't doing it. It starts with knowing how fearfully and wonderfully that we're made. You see that body up there? Now, I know you see the body. You living in it, right? But did you know that all these things contained in your muscular system? That's your electrical system. That's your electrical system. Your immune system, when you don't keep it up, you know, we've been wearing masks. Don't wear no masks without putting some essential oil or some fragrant in there because you're just smelling the cloth, by the way. Okay? Because you need to breathe. Did anybody get peppermint this morning? That's true oxygen in a bottle. And that's the smell that breathed into your body and gave you the breath of life. If you have an experience that you need to. But all these parts are part of what you feed every day when you eat your food. But if you're giving your body stuff that it don't communicate to these areas, guess what? It's a bypass. And we got to wait till you do it again. And then let's look at how many times we do that. We call these blessings and curses. You get to bless your body by your meal <laughs> or curse your body by your meal. What does your meal look like? I know you're on fast now. You're probably going, yeah, I'm doing good, Pastor. Well, you already told them to, <laughs> right? They're under your guidance, right? But when that 
veil is lifted, what are they going to do? You probably can't wait to get back there now. Ooh, February can't come fast enough. <laughs> Could it be Christians don't even have to experience things like heart attacks, strokes, being in a hospital looking like that, trying to figure out if you're going to get out. I visit people there, but I bring life. I don't bring stuff that makes them sick. You know, people bring cake and cookies and sodas and those things don't make people well. Do they make them feel good? I mean, emotionally? Yes, but they're killing them. That's not what you do. Other than prayer, which helps, but if the problem is connected to what you're doing, you need to stop doing that first. When you go to the hospital, yes, do pray, but bring something that brings life. Okay? Fruits bring life. Right? Y'all probably tired of fruit, but you need it. Especially if your digestion ain't working, you're going in the bathroom once a week. The Bible says the curse causeless can't even come in Proverbs. That means that if there's an issue that's happening in your body and you caused it, go back and look at what you're doing. And then stop doing it. I don't mean just look at it. Ooh, stop it. Stop doing that. And then pass it to your children. That's like what, why they run around here cray-cray. Because for you to get them to sit down, you give them a piece of candy and a cookie? You know that ain't right. Say that ain't right. <clears throat> the lack of knowledge is destroying the congregations. And we are supposed to be the light, but we're actually in the darkness. Most people don't give a second thought to what they put in their mouths. They never think about that what they're dealing with is associated, that physical condition, to what they actually have been eating or even drinking. Some people drink all their meals. You know there's more calories in what you drink than what you eat? You know that 500-calorie Starbucks Flappa lapa caca laca I don't know what those things are. I don't go there, so I don't, I don't know. We have to learn how to read the food labels. And here's the thing. You see these hands? They cook, they clean, they take care of your body, they prepare your food. You could do so much with your fingers because you have how many? Ten. And you can carry things. You can use all parts of your body to do a lot of things, but we never go in the kitchen and use what we need to use when it comes to our hands, right? To our fingers. We prepare things that are actually destroying us. But when we think about how we can grab our food from a tree or out of the ground or off of a vine, and it's connected to nutrients that feed our cells, that's what we should be doing first. Instead, we go buy a bag, and we, gotta, and we don't even do this. We need to read the labels. Because the labels and the words that are on there are longer. You need more time to read the labels than it is to shop. Because you don't even know what it is. This word, partially hydrogenated oils, we're going to be talking about those today. Does anybody know what that is? No, but they're on your bags, in your kitchen, in your cupboards, in your pantry. See, there's poison in your pantry, secrets under your sinks, and you didn't even know it. Poor eating habits, lifestyle, and lack of exercise are most people's problems. Because when you eat good food, guess what, Pastor? You feel like moving. You feel like working out. I mean, we don't feel like it after we eat all this dead food. It's like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Then you look at it's on Tuesday. Well, yeah, I'll do it on Tuesday and Thursday. So it keeps moving around, right? Because <laughs> you don't feel like it. And guess what? It's okay. Because you didn't know that the foods that you were eating were causing you to feel that way. And you don't want to. How many people want to work out? How many people work out? See? See what I'm saying? And most of the people are younger because when you get older, the body don't move like it used to, right? You can't sit up and sit down. You can't squat. And you can't do a lot of things that you used to be able to do. Health and happiness connects to your health when you do it on a daily basis. Jesus said, I have set before you life and death, blessings 
and cursing. Therefore, he tells us to choose life. Guess what? So that both you and your seed might live because it's not just about you. It's not just about you. Because of wrong food choices that look like this next screen, that look like this, our body is falling apart. We're destroying our health. And here's the thing. When you go and get their tests done and all that, do you know that they can't even see what's going on inside your body because the food that's not food has clogged up the body so much so that they can't see it? They can't see what the mask is. I don't, they don't know if it's a tumor. They don't know what it is. One of the ladies that's on, on my team, she said, I've been doing this for over 30-some years, and she said the mask and foreign objects that are inside of people's bodies is like being in a garbage can. What you eating? You need to ask yourself that. It says, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God that dwelleth in you, Right? Because we, we know these scriptures, but we don't think about them when we go buy our food, right? <laughs> we forget about them then. It says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God defy. Right? Destroy, I'm sorry. For the temple of God is holy, and you're the temple. Y'all know anybody whose temples have been destroyed? Do you know anybody that have a, has a sickness that was connected to their eating lifestyle? Because Eating lifestyles is the style of life that you choose. Now, I know you want to have the name brand shoes and clothes, but you need to have name brand food, too. The real reasons for health is just what I showed you in that first screen. Just like what you look at right here, it says, beware lest any man spoil you through the traditions of men, the traditions of this world. The traditions that they taught you on how to eat your food, what should be on your plate, when to eat, how to eat, how to eat. And then we do that that we see and not what we're supposed to do. We forget that the Bible has taught us what it is. These things have been handed down from generation to generation. And many Christmas, Christians were actually taught to eat like their parents. You see, sometimes what we don't realize, our parents were sharecroppers, a lot of ours, and they grew their food. Do you? Y'all don't even know that you can grow your own food. That there's seeds that can create that. And you are a seed, believe it or not. You turned into a human, but you started as a seed. But the seed that you started as, the food that God created for you to eat, feeds that body. You can't put any kind of gas in your car. Because it ain't going to run. I know I got one. Put the wrong gas in there and see what happened to it. It'd be coughing, hucking, and bucking. But so does your body. It coughs, hucks, and bucks too when you don't give it what it's supposed to have. And this ain't a message to tickle your ears. This is for you to bring change to your body. This ain't just bringing just the good news and the gospel. This is for you to transform your life. This is for you to put it into practice so you can live and not die. Eating habits that have been ha handed down have opened the door to sickness and dis-ease. And even if you ate some of the things that you should, you shouldn't eat them every day and three times a day and seven days a week and now it's 365 days. You all don't even know how to treat yourselves. You fall into a trap and you stay in the hole. You know when you, look, y'all know that song by Michael Jackson? I'm the man in the mirror, a woman in the mirror. Y'all got up and saw yourself in the mirror. Did you like what you saw? Do you like what you see? Well, if you don't, change your food. Change it today. Start doing something different. I promise you, when you do it, the body will change, and you're going to look in your mirror and say, ooh, girl, <laughs> look at you. Right. You'd be happy at that thing that's looking back at you. Because you created it. You created what you've got now. Why not recreate it? Why not remodel it? You see, it's, fa it's really crazy that fast food or non-food substances like sugar, fat, and oil, and even salt, are the culprits to blame. Those are the three main culprits. And I'm not going to talk about sugar because, I mean, everybody tells me about their sugar habits. 
but I'm going to talk about oil today because that's something that nobody talks about and something that everybody needs to hear. So as we said, the church food is really what's destroying the church community, especially when they serve it at church. Right? Those people on the boards, you better have new ears to hear. Because if you want your Christians to have a long life, help them. If you come to my house, I don't care what you eat outside. When you come to my house, you're eating what I got inside. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> we don't have no fried chicken. And I ain't trying to go get you none either. I'm not trying to contribute to what you're already doing. That's crazy. Everybody want to taste what's on my plate. And then gobble up what they got. Nope. What foods that you eat, what do they say about you? What do your foods say about you? You know where you land. You know what's your favorite, right? You know what's always on your plate. Pastor told me he's like my husband. He's a breakfast man. There's some people that got to have breakfast, but what's your breakfast made of is a question. Are you a dessert person? You decide what kind of food you eat, but real life comes from real food. You see, bad nutrition, <laughs> when we look at it, it tells us you are what you eat or what you don't assimilate. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we got to be careful. We got to be careful of what the foods are doing to us or making out of us, right? So I'm talking about fat. I told you we're going to talk about that, right? Because see, that fat food will create the fat that you wear. Uh-huh. But let's talk about oils and fats since I said we're going to talk about it because I need you to get this today. And I need you to write it down, take pictures of whatever you got to do, do what you got to do, whatever works for you. Most people today realize that they, they think that they can eat anything. But y'all know what lard was back in the day, right? We know that's not good. But neither are any of these kinds of fats, like margarine and Crisco. If you got some at home, just use it to keep your skin shiny, okay? Don't put it in your food. These are the foods that's called trans fats. And these trans fats transfer into your body, clogging it up so that the body can't breathe. Your body's always telling you you can't breathe, and you have capillaries, arteries, and veins, some of them so tiny, as tiny as a hair on your head. And if you clog them up, nothing can get through the lane. And so when they're trying to see and when it's blocked, y'all ever heard of people having blocked arteries? Blocked. They didn't tell you how I got blocked, right? They just said they blocked. That's why they blocked. Because you put too much of that in there. So oils cause crud in your blood, equaling something called sludge. What's sludge? It's the viscosity of the fluid that's flowing through your capillaries, arteries, and veins. Is it thick or is it thin? When you eat a cup of, you know, those shakes and all that fat stuff that's on top, the whipped cream and all that, that stuff can't get through your arteries. Okay, and it clogs it up. But how does the blood get thick from it, right? <laughs> That's what you want to ask yourself. It's saturated fat that causes the crud in your blood that equals the sludge. And it's from all these foods. I had to show them to you because you wouldn't have believed me if I told you. That's what's creating the sludge in your body. The glistening French fries, the hamburgers, the steaks, the chicken. It doesn't matter. Wherever the fat comes from, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Say, I wear it. But we don't wear it well. That's the problem. Foods that contribute to fat. Let me show you some more. Okay, I don't know if they're in your house, but I'm just telling you. But here's the other thing you want to know. The truth about eating oils is that one tablespoon of fat is equivalent to 14 ears of corn. But the fat that you eat, if you think about it, when you're cooking, how many people when they're cooking are measuring a teaspoon? It's like 120 calories. Do you measure your oil when you put it in the skillet? 
Oh, that's 120 calories. There goes another. Most people just open the container and pour it in there, don't they? And that's the problem. Because even if it's not lubricated enough, then you put some more in. It's about eating real food. Not eating the oil that comes from the food. Whole foods and refined foods. I got to show it to you a bigger visual. Y'all eat potato chips? So this is <laughs> refined food. This is 1,000 calories of potatoes, which you cannot eat all these in one sitting. And this is about a can of Pringles. 13, by the way, is equivalent to that 1,000 calories of potatoes. Now, you can't eat a plate of potatoes. You couldn't. Your stomach would be full. The fiber and everything is fibrous. That's what we need to fill our bodies. But have some oil. It'll fill your belly up. I'm going to prove it to you. Just keep watching. What about a baked potato? and french fries, 30 calories. And now that you glistened them and fried them and dyed them and laid them to the side, now you got 500 calories. Mm-hmm. They ain't making your body glisten. But just like we talked about, Pastor, how we're clogging up the arteries, let's take a look at what that looks like. This is a person that's had... Um, a heart issue on the standard American diet. The artery is closed. But because of changing and adding more life to their plate, the artery is open. And this is about a six, what was it, 90 day difference of eating. Now I can show many clips and things, but I need to tell you because sometimes you don't see what I'm saying. That's what you're doing to your body when you eat all this food called oil. Let's look at some of the oils that are causing it. Cooking oils. I know you think they're safe, but they're not. Anybody have those in the house? These are not your saviors. These destroy your health. I don't care what anybody else tells you, that's what they do. Next screen. These are some other ones. Just in case you didn't have the other ones, you might think that olive oil, Coconut oil, oil that is, avocado oil, walnut oils. If you're going to eat a food that's fat, eat the food. Eat the avocado versus the oil. Eat the walnut versus the oil, okay? Eat the olive versus the oil because you won't clog your body up. And here, can I tell you this? When you eat this, I'm going to give you the opportunity to eat this way until we meet again. But I promise you by next week, if you're trying to lose any weight, between five pounds, maybe three to five, seven, ten pounds, that's going to happen this week as soon as you add. Take that oil off your plate and watch what your body says. Let's talk about vegetable oils. Vegetable oils release toxins, chemicals called <clears throat> acrylamides, which cause cancer and all other neurological diseases. What are neurological diseases? MS, fibromyalgia, lupus, nerve pain from diabetes, that's messing with your nervous system, your electrical system. You know that, right? You got to keep these foods out of your body. If you want to live now, you can do what you want to do. I'm here to tell you what you need to do. Can I show you some more? These are called trans fats. Read the back of the package. They shouldn't be on their process. What is it? Um, hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils that are on your back of your containers. What about your Skippy? And for the choosy moms that choose Jeff. Yeah, well, you ain't so choosy because the same fat in this is the same fat in that. And these fats clog up the body. These hydrogenated oils are just like margarine and all the other fatty things that you put in your body. Remember I told you how you just marinate the skillet to put your food in there? Does fat have any taste, by the way? No, what would you put it in there for? Just use your herbs. That's what you want. You want it to taste good, not to be sliding around. <laughs> so some nutritionists believe that margarine is the single most dangerous so-called food in the American diet. I just need you to get the poisons out of your pantry and the secrets from under the sink. Next slide. Because one of the reasons that's, is that you also want to see, now this is a sandwich on the top. I just want to let you know, in case you can't see, this is a sandwich. 
and this is an artery clog. Do they look similar? <laughs> kind of similar, right? But the contributing factors are these eating of these fatty foods cause high cholesterol, smoking, also causing in it, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. I didn't leave anything out there. Alzheimer's. Messing with the brain. When you feed your body, your eyeballs are supposed to get fed. <laughs> you don't feed your body and eyeballs ain't included. You don't feed your body and your brain's not included. Your limbs. When you feed your cells, you feed your cells, the body that you're in. But we don't need any of this because of eating too much fat. Because Alzheimer's is something that, it's not a new disease because we all get it. Have you ever lost your keys and wondered where they were? What did I park? What did I come in here for? Those are all the beginning signs. And if you have those, you could possibly be dealing with this thing called Alzheimer's in the beginning stage dementia. Next one. <clears throat> Heart disease. Food is the cause, but food is the cure too. Right food. Okay, I can't just say that because you just be, oh, I could just, nope. Next slide. Hmm. Type 2 diabetes. Fat in the cells of the muscles. That's what's the problem. Fat in the cells of the liver. Now you jack it up your liver. That's your filter. Fat in the cells of your pancreas. They say there's no cure for pancreas of the cancer, cancer of the pancreas, right? It is if you stop eating fat. Back that thing up, like you back your car up. <laughs> and then there's something called intramyular cellular, which is fat. This is fat around your cells. And I didn't bring the picture of fat around your cells because some of y'all know what that feels like already, so I didn't need to show you, right? <laughs> fat around your cells in places you don't like it to be. As a matter of fact, I bought some fat for y'all to see because I know y'all don't know what it is and, and touch or whatever. This is where fat is found, okay, and some of these things here. But I'm going to pass this one around. How many people know how much fat this is? Five pounds? Five? Five? Can I get five? One. That's one pound of fat. And I need you to see that because this is five. <laughs> this is five pounds of fat. Okay, now I don't know where it is. Is it on your neck, on your arm, on your leg? Where is it? Where, it's where you don't want it to be, right? And it's heavy. It's heavy. Make sure they get back up here. <laughs> but I need you to understand is when you eat that fat, it's not supposed to stay on your body. Everything you eat, along with fiber and good nutrition, should go in and out of the body like it was created to do. It's not supposed to stay and find a resting place on your cells or on your body. Next slide. <clears throat> Nobody has time for fat, right? When we think about that, and I have to hone in on this because this is where I'm located. When we eat fat and we think about where fat comes from, there's a disease that's called E. coli, salmonella, mad cow, bird flu, parasites, clogged our diabetes, and di obesity, Alzheimer's cancer, so forth and so on. All that is contributed from fats that come from where? Animals. Me. And look, I'm not a person that's down to people that eat meat. If you choose to eat it, that's your choice. But know what you're doing when you eat it. Because we weren't designed to eat it three times a day seven days a week, and 365 days of the year. Look at the Bible. How many feasts did they have? Even if you had special occasions that you ate it, because you eat it every day, though, you got a problem. You can't even hide it, even if you tried. But let me tell you about another one. If I, I could just teach a whole class on this next one alone. Let's look at it. Know where your fat is hiding and where, what you're eating. It's called scary dairy. That's what I call it. Okay. So we need to dump our dairy because it's scary. It says right here that women who drink three or more glasses per day have a 60% increase of developing fractures. Because it's supposed to do the bones good. Don't they tell us that? But did you just read this? 
And it also says drinking three or more glasses of milk also increases the morbidity and mortality of 93%. So here's the thing. Dairy is connected to many of the diseases that we have today because we weren't designed to eat another mammal's milk. We want it because it say it has high protein, right? But that old Molly Dollar, that Molly Dollar, right, that the man is making, he tells us to eat this, and they tell us that we have stronger bones, right? We can get slim. They got all these celebrities with these milk mustaches. That's just lard, by the way, because milk doesn't stay on your lips. But the sad thing about it is what dairy is doing to our body. Here's some alternatives down here if you just want to check it out for yourself. Hemp seed milk, almond milk, coconut milk. These are all alternatives, almond, oat, whatever you choose, but not dairy. If you want to get more protein, do you know what, who's, what animal you get the most milk from? A rat. I don't know where you got your nose turned up. You drinking a cow. What's the difference? Rat, cow. But let's see what we would do to animals if animals ate like us. This is what, animals are not ever out of the element. Animals don't end up looking like that. Never. Y'all been to Africa, did y'all see any animals that look like that? I didn't think so. That's because they look like that over here, yeah, right? Like bears with no hair, right? When we eat this type of food, that's what kind of body we create. And the more we eat it, the bigger we get. A little bit, and then a lot grows over time, right? And we change our whole identity. I even, I remember going to the zoo and I was asking about the bisons and what they ate and she told me they ate grass. Y'all ever seen a bison? He's big. She told me he eats grass. I said, no, no, I'm talking about the bison. She said, yeah, he eats grass. I said, all the time? She said, that's their diet. See, we don't eat our diet anymore. We're the only mammal that gets to choose what we eat. So we're the, also the only mammals that suffer, and we actually spend our life savings trying to get well. Can you meet me halfway? Can you just meet me halfway? Can you meet me halfway? Yes. What I mean by that, can you change just something this week? Will you do that? I need to show you why on the next screen. Because when we eat 500 calories, which can be anything, and I'm not telling you on any diets, you don't see me up here telling about anybody getting on a diet, 500 calories of food look like this. If it's oil, your stomach is still full. You're growling and rumbling and all that. If it's cheese or cheese-like foods, your stomach is still not food, right? If it's meat, your body is getting fuller, but you're still not filled. But when we eat the foods that God told us to eat, the nuts, seeds, which have all the fiber in it, the fiber keeps you full. There's even more of it in the fruits and vegetables because it's on the skin of the fruits. It's in the vegetables that we eat. So they need to be on your plate. They have to be on your plate for you to have optimal health. And when you eat them, why is it on every health diet? Those are the foods that they tell you to eat so your body can transform. And you already know that, but they ain't never on your plate. Okay. Let me show you something else that happens when you eat the right foods. When you eat the right foods, your body gets a signal that says, I'm full. When we don't eat the right foods, like I just showed you on the last screen, the body is still looking for the signal. But when we eat the right foods, the body gets a signal in the body as well. You don't believe me? Start eating, get out of, off of the oil, eat more fiber, and watch for yourself. Let me show you something. This is a handout that you're going to get. <laughs> if you choose to get it or take it home, it's called calorie density. Now, this calorie density sheet, I need to show you this really quickly because it's important. Now, we know the first or the beverage of choice or the beverage of champions is what? Why? Because there's no calories, right? And water helps clean the body out. It helps with detoxification. It helps with a lot of things, right? The next one is 150 calories in most of your vegetables, then about 250 in your fruits, but when we go a little bit higher, we're getting more fiber. So in our grains and whole grains, we get about 550 calories. And then in your beans and lentils, which are really good, higher in protein than any steak on your plate. So you, if you eat beans and rice, I tell people beans, greens, and rice. 
beans, rice, and greens. However you do it, but make sure your greens are on your plate. But this is where most of the calories that are good for the body should be in the body every day. When you go above the royalty line, royalty, okay, this is where all the trouble begins. Because we add in the foods that the world told us to eat. If the animal kingdom ain't eating them, so neither should you be. Right. So when you eat these things, you got to know they need to be eaten on special occasions or moderation. And here's the other thing you need to know. Which one has the most water content? All oh, these have water in them, if you notice that, right? These foods don't, but they have more calories and fat. Highest fat is where? So when you eat oil, eat foods with oil, you eat more calories than your body should be taking in. And I don't care what program you're on, when you add this to the program that you're on, this keeps you safe at the plate. Not only in your plate, in your body too. Because if you don't do it, here's what'll happen. What's more extreme? Those are culprits, we're talking about fat, but what's more extreme? Open heart surgery or a lifestyle change? That's all you need to do. Change your life and you'll change, change your lifestyle and you'll change your life. Now I have a hand that I want to share with you. I want to just give you this um, quote. I can read it actually. Just by switching one bad lifestyle to one healthier one, you can expect to add 14 years to your life. One. What one are we talking about today? Oil. Oil. One. I'm going to give you one next time, and I'm going to help you help yourself. I'm going to talk about sugar next time, so I want you to bring in whatever sugar you have in your house that you got questions about or want to know, because I want to let you know. And that means even if you have foods in your house that you love, but sugar's hiding in them. Because fat's hiding in some, so sugar got to be hiding too, right? And, but here's some healthier choices for oil, because I don't want to just leave you hanging like, man, she have told her to take that off. What am I eating? Right? So for some healthier solutions, you want to have fats that come from food. That's like I said, avocados, really good women. An avocado takes nine months to mature. Is that something just like us as babies, right? So we need to have that every day for hormone balance. Anybody got hormone imbalances? I know avocados don't taste like something, but there's a way that you can whip it up, call it guacamole, whatever you want to call it, but it should be eaten every day. Avocados, nuts, seeds. And when you eat your nuts, no roast them or toast them or sugar them or down or none of that stuff. Eat them raw. Why? Because when you do that, fat is added. They have to roast them in fat. They have to toast them in fat. Olives, add those to your salads. Coconut in your smoothies. The coconut, not the fat, the coconut. And then, of course, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, all those are good fibers. And for those that know about essential oils, we'll get into that. That's later. But remember to take care of yourself because you can never pour from an empty cup. And the goal of this whole program is to give yourself the royal treatment. So that handout that we were just talking about, it looks like this. For those who didn't take a picture or aren't computer savvy, you'll get it online on where pastor's notes are. This is the fat replacements for those who better do that. And I want you to let people know in a week how your body's transfer, transforming. I want you to let them know how smooth your moves are <laughs> and how your body is feeling better because you decided to treat it better. Amen? Amen. God bless.